Welcome to another LMI demo video. We're going to show you how to set up automatic part detection using a 3D laser line profiler. We're using a Gokator 2350 model with a conveyor section to simulate a typical customer installation, where parts are moving continuously down a conveyor and those parts need to be automatically detected and then measured or inspected. We have a bunch of samples that we're going to be using in this demonstration, representative of the types of applications we get involved in. This is our browser interface. We're connected to a Gokator 2350 model. And again, we're going to configure this for continuous scanning and automatic part detection. So the 3D system won't need another device or sensor or PLC to tell it when individual parts come by. We'll automatically scan them and singulate them and then inspect or measure them. First thing we're going to do is adjust our active area, which is sort of the sensor's field of view. This particular model is capable of seeing a large area. But we're going to narrow that field down so that we don't see the table, for example, and also so that we increase our frame rate. Next, we're going to perform an alignment. Now, LMI's 3D sensors come factory calibrated, meaning you don't need to calibrate them in the field like you would with traditional 2D sensors using checkerboard or an array of dots. All our values are displayed in millimeters. As you'll see here, when I hover over a profile, the value that's shown is in millimeters. And my axes, my X and Y axes are in millimeters as well. What alignment does is change your reference so that, for example, all measurements are reported relative to the conveyor. In this case, I trained on a flat surface, the conveyor. So when I hover over it, you'll see that the value is close to zero. Another piece of setting up our 3D system is determining the conveyor speed, or if we were using an encoder, our encoder resolution. And we'll do this through a moving alignment using a disk of known dimensions. We'll put this disk on our conveyor and just pass it under the sensor. We'll make sure that we select encoder or speed calibration For a more in-depth understanding of alignment, check out LMI's multi-sensor layout and alignment webinar. So now the moving alignment is complete and you'll see our travel speed is populated. We're not using an encoder, so it, we weren't able to measure our encoder resolution, which is fine. So in addition to measuring our conveyor speed, we measured our sensor tilt and are able to populate these transformation values. Okay, moving on, let's go ahead and scan some parts. We'll switch to surface mode because rather than scanning a single profile, now we're gonna stitch these profiles into surfaces and we'll wanna scan continuously, automatically detecting when parts go by. Our part detection settings include a height threshold, and a minimum area, and a max part length. This ensures that we don't get false scans of noise or double count items. When we press run, the sensor's laser will turn on and we'll start scanning, but only return a surface when it meets our part detection criteria. Our first scan will be our alignment disc, and it looks pretty much like you'd expect. We are seeing a little bit of noise on the leading edge, which is common with light-colored reflective conveyor belts, but we can remove this pretty easily by selecting edge filtering. Next, we'll place the system into record mode, so every scan we take will be recorded in a film strip. We can save this film strip, look at it later, uh, it also lets us see when parts go by. We'll get a count of all the parts that get scanned. Here we're scanning some toy blocks. We'll see the counter in the film strip increment. And we'll put a small block on the conveyor. And you'll notice it doesn't get scanned. It doesn't increment our film strip. And this is because this particular block doesn't meet our part detection criteria. We drop our min area and rerun the block, it'll get scanned.
We'll go ahead and scan some more parts. Some more children's toys first. Now, because our sensor is positioned above the conveyor, we only see the top of each part. If we wanted to see the sides, we could add additional scanners and combine their data into a single point cloud. Again, check our webinar on multi-sensor layouts, where we talk about this in much greater detail. Here's an apple, and you can see a well that stem shows up. Let's run some more parts through. These are some more toy blocks. And let's put two of these blocks through very close together. And you'll notice they get scanned as one part. And that's because the gap between them is less than five millimeters. We can also put two blocks in side by side and keep an eye on the recorded image count. There you saw that it jumped up from 9 to 11, and that's because we actually scanned two parts. The parts were separated by more than 5 millimeters. If we go through our recorded images, we'll see both of those scans. It came through at virtually the same time, but the system was smart enough to separate them into two separate parts. One thing that's worth pointing out is that we're capturing both 3D and 2D scan data here and somewhat superimposing them on each other. We can show just the 3D data if we turn off the intensity overlay. We'll show this combination of 2D and 3D data again with the scan of an Altoids tin. If you disable the intensity data overlay, you can see the embossed features like this Altoids text, but you won't see the cinnamon text uh, because that's not raised. Here we're scanning some food products, and notice that the 3D system is equally capable of capturing 3D point cloud data of light colored or dark colored parts, such as dark chocolate and white chocolate. Next, we'll scan a couple of crescent wrenches. Notice that the smaller wrench scanned fine, but the longer wrench is broken up into two separate scans. This is due to our part detection settings. Right now, we're configured for a max part length of 150 millimeters, which is the longer wrench exceeds. If we increase this value, say to 250, and rescan, we should be able to capture the entire part in a single scan. The last part we'll scan is a circuit board. The circuit board scans well when it's upside down, but if we scan it right side up, we'll see only the higher components on the board. We'll miss the actual board itself. And again, that's due to our part detection settings. We've set our height threshold to five millimeters and the board is thinner than that. So we can address this by either dropping our height threshold or just raising the part a little bit. In addition to automatically detecting parts, our 3D system can trigger an output telling other equipment, such as a barcode reader, when a part is present. So it can eliminate the need for a separate photo eye and simplify your PLC code. And that's the end of our part detection video. Thank you for watching.